All this started really as a, a young kid at the age of six or seven. One Christmas I got given a Harrier model. I remember sitting there at the kitchen table gluing on the wings and the rocket pods and being absolutely fascinated by the, the picture on the box of this Harrier flying along at really high speed and low level. Every year we used to go along to air shows like RF Milden Hall and see the aircraft flying like the Phantom Buccaneer and some real British greats like the English Electric Lightning and to see those aircraft flying, you know, in such large numbers, such high speed, you know, as a small child, that was, that was pretty awesome and really awe-inspiring and, and that's what planted the seed for the, the passion which is behind Jet Art today. My first time in an aircraft, I remember it vividly. It was a great experience. It was as an air cadet. It was very close to here at RAF Linton on Ouse, just up the road. The pilot took me up and then did some mild aerobatics, which was like the most extreme fairground ride I could have ever been on at that age. We did manoeuvres like a stall turn. To experience that, like being on a roller coaster, was, was really quite special at, at that young age. So I left the Air Force in around 2005 did a couple of jobs like fitting kitchens and bathrooms, doing up houses, very quickly realised this is not what I want to do, this is not pushing my buttons. My wife was pregnant at the time and I came home one day and I said, I'm not going to do this anymore, we're going to sell aeroplane parts and, and make furniture out of parts of aircraft. And my wife Mel thought that I was maybe a little bit crazy but she backed me 110% and that's how Jet Art was started. Around 2007 we uh, we bought our first aeroplane, it was a bit of a crazy purchase. We saw a Harrier jump jet for sale. I had a quick discussion about whether we should buy it. And it was my wife, Mel, who just basically uh, turned around and went, sod it, we're buying a Harrier. And that's what we did. When the opportunity came up to buy the Transatlantic Air Race Harrier, you know, it was an opportunity not to be missed. The aircraft was in a pretty poor state, but it was one that we really wanted because of the you know, very special, very special history. This is an aircraft that flew across the Atlantic, you know, 50 years ago in 1969 and landed vertically in London and, and then took off again and landed in New York. The chance to restore X3741 was really a, an opportunity that we wanted to grasp. We wanted to do it right. Really, it's, it's more about working on a piece of history than a piece of metal. I do find that I get emotionally attached to some aeroplanes, especially ones that we've had for a long time or we've put an immense amount of effort into, like on XV741. To see it go out the door at the end of the project really is a sad day in some ways, but it's also very exciting, especially when it ends up in a place like a public museum so people can go and see all the hard work and, and effort that's been put in. And, you know, the feeling that that asset has been preserved you know it's now somewhere where people can go and see it and enjoy it that, that's a really good feeling and something that we're very proud of.